Okay, people, now in this particular video, I'm going to show you how we can use that timer zero uh, as an interrupt. As you can see here, every two seconds, another combination of LED is going to glow. But that is actually uh, on port B, rising from zero to 255. Uh, not that important that this is an easy project uh, it's only I'm going to show you how you can configure uh, timer zero uh, to use uh, with an interrupt which is a very important function uh, in many applications with big microcontroller this is only a tutorial so let's uh, get started Okay, so basically I copied the code from uh, the book of PIC programming, uh, micro, uh, PIC microcontrollers programming in C, uh, Microelectronica's website, and uh, yeah, I copied it, I didn't make any adjustments because, uh, you know, I, I, I can't do anything better for a beginner. So this is the code that I used. Okay, so first uh, the schematic over here. I have eight LEDs on port B and when I start the program I will have uh, uh, let, let me just show you the code so I have here uh, initial value is zero so all the port is equal to zero and when an interrupt occurs it is gonna rise uh, it is gonna increment on port B by one so it is not uh, lead shifting or lead chaser that goes from this dial to this uh, when this goes it is uh, on the less that is the least significant bit so i will have you know this particular situation you know on every one second the binary combination is gonna uh, increment by one as you can see and then that is gonna be the output on port B. Now I said in the beginning two seconds, it's actually one second because I did some calculations and I miscalculated when I said two seconds. So uh, sorry for that. It, it is, but you can make it also to be uh, two seconds if you want. I'll show you how you do that. So let's go to the code over here. Now, um, I don't want to start over here. Let's start first from the option register over here. Okay, so I want to go uh, first to the timer zero and see some things uh, necessary for uh, programming. Okay, so here is the block diagram of timer uh, zero. Uh, in this particular video, I didn't use uh, the external pin RA4 as I did uh, in my last video, I used the crystal oscillator's frequency. Now, first of all, let's see the block diagram here or anywhere you want. Uh, so this is where I used the crystal oscillator. So it first divides the frequency of the oscillator by four. So that is by default. Now here, in this particular stage, I have two megahertz because I used an uh, oscillator of eight megahertz but if you use any other uh, frequency for example 20 then you will have uh, 20 divided by 4 to megahertz so this is the first calculation i made 8 megahertz divided by 4 so now i have a frequency of uh, 2 megahertz in this particular stage now uh, option register is uh, hexadecimal uh, 84 but in binary I'll show you that is equal to uh, this first is gonna be one which is uh, an important uh, not that much important but here uh, I have this uh, le uh, first tree that is equal to one zero zero so let me show you what that actually Mean. So let's go to this option register over here. So the, we had a logical one on the most significant bit. Uh, if I put logic one, that means that the pull-ups are disabled on port B. So I don't have any pull-up resistors on port B. That, that was uh, just, you know, not, not, not that important. Okay, now I have all zeros 
to uh, until I, I go to bit number two. So this means that interrupt on falling edge, the not of int pin. So that is not important. Uh, inter yeah. So <coughs> sorry, I sneezed. So this bit five is important. T zero CS. Uh, it actually uh, you choose. Are you gonna use this pin over here, RA four? As you can remember from the last time or are you going to use the internal instruction cycle block over here so you use this or this and this here is a multiplexer so if I bring a zero over here then I'm using this particular mode if I bring uh, a logical one I'm using uh, the external pin so that is T0 CS yes of course now uh, T0SE uh, isn't important if you don't use an external uh, pin and this here bit 3 is important because if I brought a logical 0 to it and uh, the prescaler is assigned to the timer 0 module. What is a prescaler? That is, a nine, no, that is another frequency divider. So I brought the uh, combination over here or sorry uh, they brought I mean that is not my program the combination here one zero zero so I will have this particular combination and that is gonna be equal to one divided by 32 so this frequency that I had over here as you can see which was 2 megahertz is gonna be divided by uh, uh, 32 because of the PSA combination over here uh, no, 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 uh, so, sorry, over here, and uh, yeah, so that is uh, the prescaler, and uh, it basically divides this frequency uh, with uh, 32 if I put 100. Zero, zero. So now I have another situation. Another situation is that I uh, have 2 megahertz or 2 million hertz divided by 32. Uh, and that is equal to 62,500 uh, hertz. So that is the frequency that I brought to the timer zero module. And uh, its period is equal to uh, one divided by uh, six. Uh, so this, if I have the frequency, and if I want to know the period of the frequency, then I have one divided by the frequency and that is equal to zero and comma four zeros 16 seconds. I hope uh, that is understandable for you. Okay, so that is the timer zero module. So I need to know uh, what frequency I brought here to the timer zero module here to the time. Uh, so here to the timer zero register that is very important right now okay so that was the first part now I know I think you know how you uh, can change the frequency of the timer zero module okay now um, that was the first part now the second part over here is that I uh, need to enable an interrupt interrupt is when uh, a program stops because something happened uh, if we want to use a timer zero interrupt, that means that uh, there is an overflow. So what is actually an overflow on this particular uh, overflow? Okay, so I have this 8-bit register called uh, TMR0 and it is 8-bit register long. And so it can have a value from 0 to 255. And then if I had sorry so if i had a, a number 255 and, and i increment one more then it is gonna be an interrupt so the program the microcontroller knows that something uh, interrupted uh, that something uh, occurred i think that is understandable so first i brought an initial value of 96 or sorry they brought a 96 value of the on the this uh, register timer zero so uh, 
it need and uh, interrupt will occur uh, when this value becomes 255 or sorry uh, plus one so uh, there is 255 minus 96 259 minus 96 steps so that is equal to 159 steps so there is 159 uh, steps before an interrupt occurs so i need to go, i need to have a value of 255 so this uh, so that uh, an interrupt will occur on the timer zero uh, register okay so that uh, is for now that okay so if i know the frequency of the timer zero module and this is a frequency or sorry this is the period so uh, which one value will increment on timer zero register then if i uh, multiply 159 times the period over here i forgot one to put then on every uh, 0.002544 seconds an interrupt will occur and then the microcontroller knows something is uh, happening in that particular moment now i have to enable the interrupt interrupt is enabled with this intcon register okay and uh, let's start for the bringing, beginning over here now i have an uh, unsigned variable called count uh, cnt and when an interrupt occurs over here this uh, variable is gonna rise by one and i set the initial value uh to 96. okay i hope that is uh under uh so that I, I can use any other value but uh you know you will see uh, so with this value you actually choose uh, in uh in what time an interrupt will occur if you use uh, i don't know a higher number then an interrupt will occur faster if you use a smaller number uh, a smaller uh, a longer time will be uh, necessary so, uh, so that uh, interrupt will occur okay let's go to this uh, intcon register over here so i brought here in uh, interrupt function over here to zero zero x to zero that is a hexadecimal value so when i bring here to zero i have a one on the sixth uh, uh the sixth position let me just get here one two three four five six okay so here on bit number five so this is bit number five i brought uh an inter one logical one so this uh pin over here bit five of uh intcon register enables an uh timer zero interrupt and it is gonna be enabled when an overflow uh, is detected so when the timer zero register goes above one value above 255 then the interrupt will occur now it says here uh, bit uh, t zero i e is set but t zero i f is cleared this bit over here is uh, basically the same but uh, you need to put uh zero value zero on uh timer zero register it says it must be cleared from within the software so that's basically it okay now i enabled the timer uh, zero interrupt let's see the code uh further on okay i we uh, i said what was the prescaler uh, this was uh, we choose we have chosen the frequency of the timer zero uh, Ansel and Ansel H are configured as digital nothing special about here and tries B is equal uh, is configured as output and at first uh, the port is resetted board B is equal to zero now I put the register uh, is equal to 96 so it is gonna count from 96 to 255 so this is what I uh, 
said to you. So there are 159 steps before the interrupt occurs and on every 0 0.40 0, uh, 16 uh, seconds uh, the timer 0 is going to be incremented by 1 and after 159 steps that is equal on every 0 0.00 2544 uh, seconds an interrupt will occur okay so that is understandable uh, and now intcon is equal to 0x a0 uh, a0 hexadecimal is equal to 101101 uh, one and all zeros so that means here uh, this says the same enables the timer zero interrupt this just says it will enable all the interrupts there there are so if you want to use an interrupt and there are several interrupts in this particular microcontroller you have to bring a logical one on this bit GIE on incon register okay and now initial value of this variable here is equal to zero okay now look uh, we enabled the interrupt so this here enabled the interrupt and there is an endless loop over here do while so that that is an forever loop now is if it says if cnt is equal to 400 why because look uh, first it was equal to zero and when an interrupt occurs so when this brings to 255 there is an increment on increment of one increment by one on uh, cnt variable so this here on every interrupt which will happen on every 0 0.00 2544 uh, seconds this count variable over here is gonna be uh, incremented by one and it says for if it is equal to 400 then the port B is gonna have uh, then a number is gonna be incremented by one so this is you know uh, port B plus plus it is gonna be incremented by one and yeah uh, if in then the binary value is going to rise by one uh, on this port b and if it is equal to 400 after that set it to zero and uh, yeah it goes uh, forever and that is equal uh, that is basically it so and why did i said one second because uh, I need 400 interrupts over here so uh, that uh, one on every one second 1.0176 seconds an LED is uh, port B is gonna be incremented by one so that is why uh, you see a binary value over here on these LEDs and that that's basically it for this uh, tutorial so thank you for watching i hope you learned something new uh, th this is a very important thing to understand because a lot of times you will use this uh, timer zero with an interrupt especially with uh, digital to analog conver uh, converters because the for loops if loops they don't uh, they don't uh, you don't know how many times a for loop or if loop takes uh, to execute so that's why we need to use a timer because with timer we are more precise and we know how much it uh, takes a uh, program to execute uh, delay function is just waiting for something uh, is it just a delay it just waits for something else to happen but with timer zero uh, we know when something is gonna uh, occur and how it is gonna uh, occur so that is basically it for this video i hope you learned something and uh, see you in my next video goodbye